consumer math. In our chapter one, we're going to be discussing what gross income is. So we're going to be using words like overtime pay and salary and part-time pay, straight-time pay. And we're going to be talking about things like taking out taxes, federal income taxes, state taxes, income taxes. So to open this chapter, chapter one, we're going to first talk about what straight time pay is. So why should you really care? So most of you are all going to enter the workforce at some time in your life, whether it's babysitting your neighbor's kids or working at a local grocery store or waiting tables at a diner or whether you go to college to become a teacher or a doctor or a lawyer or you go to work on heavy machinery or cut hair you're all going to have some kind of job at one point in your life where you're going to get paid it's going to be very important that you're able to read your paychecks and understand how they are calculating what that gross income is and how they're taking everything out and resulting in what is considered your paycheck or your net pay. So we've got a lot of language to learn. In our very first lesson, however, we're just simply talking about hourly pay. So in hourly pay, this is when you get paid by the hour. So if you get paid $10 an hour and you work for four hours, it's a simple math problem and you're gonna get paid $40 for that day. Now that becomes your gross pay. That's before any taxes are taken out. So that's what we're gonna be calculating today, that gross pay. All right, so let's first talk about some language, the first vocabulary term we're going to talk about is that hourly rate and an hourly rate is a fixed amount of money paid for each hour of work. Now if you're in my consumer math class you should be putting this into your notebooks these voca vocabulary terms. So you first want to know what your hourly rate is. Secondly I need you to understand what that straight time pay is. So this is how you calc or we calculate what your actual pay is. So that straight time pay is the total amount of money earned for a pay period at the hourly rate. Now if you need to pause this and get those vocabulary terms written in your notebook, go ahead and do so now. So moving on to our formulas. So our formula for straight time pay is simply to take our hourly rate. So maybe it's $8.25 an hour or $10 an hour or $30 an hour. And you're gonna simply multiply that by hours worked. Now, again, straight time pay will be part of what's considered your gross pay. So we're going to use that word a lot in this chapter. That gross pay is before anything is taken out, before they take out health care or taxes, Social Security, anything's taken out. We calculate our first type of pay, which is considered straight dime pay, by taking the hourly rate times the hours worked. So you want to write this formula or any given formula into your notebook. Pause if necessary. All right, so our first problem is Shauna Jackson is a mail clerk. She earns $8.40 per hour. So that $8.40 is her hourly rate. Last week she earned 40, she worked 40 hours and this week she worked 39 and a half hours. What is her straight time pay for each week? All right, so her hourly pay for each week is $8.40 per hour. Now simply putting it, that into our lesson formula, we're going to multiply that by the 40 hours that she worked last week. And when we do a quick calculation, if I multiply that out on my calculator, I get that Shauna's gross pay for last week was $336. And we're calculating that as straight time. That means that she's not 
incurring any overtime or extra pay for her work. Now this week, she only worked 39 and a half. Her hourly rate still stays the same at $8.40 per hour, but this time she only worked 39 and a half hours. So again, after a quick calculation of multiplying that out, we get that her total straight time pay or her gross pay is $331.80. So you can see the difference in working that one more half hour, she earns another $4.20. All right, now our second example puts a little bit of twist to this where we're gonna need to understand that algebra component and all of you have had algebra one, so this should be fairly easy for you. This says Walter works as a coffee shop clerk. He earns $9.75 per hour. So there's his hourly rate right there. How many hours does he need to work next week so that he makes a total of $240? So that's going to be his gross pay or his straight time pay in this problem. So remember that his pay is equal to his hourly rate using that formula time out times the hours worked when we use that formula we know this time that his pay is 240 his hourly rate is 975 what we need to know is in order to make 240 how many hours is he going to need to work so to calculate that we're going to do a quick one step equation and solve that. So because the opposite of multiplying by 9.7 is dividing, I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 9.75. When I do that quickly with my calculator, I take 240 divided by $9.75. We're going to say roughly, now this is an estimate because I'm going to round it, he needs to work about 25 hours. Now I rounded that to the nearest hour. But in this problem, we didn't know the hours worked. We solved the equation for it. Now that concludes our lesson one about straight time pay for consumer math. Look on Google Classroom for your assignment.